An information cycle is the pattern of media coverage that follows a newsworthy event. The triggering event can be a lot of things. For example, it can be a scientific discovery, a political scandal, or a natural disaster. Information cycles follow a familiar pattern. Understanding this pattern can help you understand the role and significance of the sources you encounter when you are doing your own research. Depending on where they fall on the information cycle, sources can have different purposes, different audiences, and different levels of complexity. In the late summer of 2005, Hurricane Katrina, a massive storm that reached Category 5 status, achieved winds of 173 miles per hour in the Gulf of Mexico. The hurricane first touched ground in southern Florida on August 25th. Three days later, after gathering force, it touched down a second time in the states of Mississippi and Louisiana. Multiple levees in New Orleans failed, inundating the city with water. With over 1,800 fatalities and more than 250,000 people removed from their homes, the hurricane is considered one of the five deadliest in the history of the United States. When Hurricane Katrina touched land in August of 2005, it set in motion a chain of events that are still continuing to this day. From the initial search and rescue operations to the rebuilding and recovery that still continues, the hurricane launched Americans on odysseys, both personal and national. It also set in motion an information cycle. In the minutes and hours following the landfall of Hurricane Katrina on the Louisiana coast, television and internet news shifted from forecasting the weather event to reporting real-time events as they unfolded. Reporters provided eyewitness coverage, summarizing hurricane damage in Mississippi and Alabama, describing evacuation efforts in New Orleans, and repeating statements made by the city mayor, the governor, and other officials. As the levees were breached, attention shifted to the flooding and rescue efforts. News was reported minutes after it happened, and reporters relied on first-hand reports, official press releases, and local news footage to summarize the situation. Initial inaccuracies were revised on the fly as the news was continuously updated. Hours later, newspapers brought a coherence to the fragmented coverage of the immediate landfall, offering timelines, graphs, and maps of the levees. Very little commentary or analysis occurred in the first few hours and days, but as time progressed, more expert voices were sought by journalists, engineers, ecologists, and doctors, to name a few. Early reporting provides a record of how things happened, but news organizations often have to juggle two different purposes, to inform their viewing audience about newsworthy events in a timely manner and to draw an audience for their advertisers. As a result, news organizations can err, from making mistakes in their haste to report the news to over-sensationalizing the events. For example, during the first few days of Hurricane Katrina, several news outlets made a big deal about the extent of looting. As commentators pointed out a week later, there was a racial bias to who were labeled looters and who were simply finding things. Even later, it became clear that there was no more looting than typical for a scene of a natural disaster. This one decision to focus on the sensational story of looters started its own information cycle, as commentators reacted to and researchers analyzed the choices made in those early reports. To this day, academic articles are still being published on how reporters talking about Hurricane Katrina handled issues of race. In the weeks following the landfall of Hurricane Katrina and the breaching of the New Orleans levee, new events were still occurring. People filled the Superdome, living in close quarters for days, and then were evacuated from the Superdome. Stories of both negligence and compassion were uncovered. But commentary began to make its way into the discussion of Hurricane Katrina. Over this time, journalists were the main source of information responding to the events as they unfold. Questions about the impact of Katrina on society culture and public policy were raised. Opinions on how the government was handling the crisis, on whether New Orleans should be rebuilt, became part of the conversation. News magazines provided both summary and commentary, and historical context was brought to bear as the media compared Katrina and the government response to other hurricanes. In the months that followed, journalists and other writers had more time to research and analyze what happened in New Orleans. Longer, more in-depth articles appear in regional and national magazines. Authors and speakers responded to the claims made earlier in the days and weeks following the hurricane. While the purpose of earlier conversations was to inform, these articles have differing purposes, to persuade, to memorialize, to analyze. Even later, after more than half a year has passed, academic voices are heard. Scholars report on their empirical research related to Hurricane Katrina, 
or take up some of the questions that were asked months earlier. What went wrong with the government's response? How does race impact disaster response? Many of these articles put their subject in historical, cultural, or scientific context, providing a more thorough examination of the topic than possible in a newspaper or magazine article. Academic articles have bibliographies showing their research and tend to be peer-reviewed prior to publication. They also tend to be written in specialized language and appear to be intended for a narrow audience of experts. While some of these articles will in turn be reported on in newspapers and magazines, the majority will be read primarily by specialists in their fields. Also published later, with a broader focus than academic articles, are books addressing the subject of the disaster in New Orleans and the years toward recovery. Some books that appear within the first year of the hurricane are intended for audiences interested in commemorating in photos and stories. Others are for more specialized audiences, environmental specialists, healthcare providers, climatologists. Scholars continue to write about Hurricane Katrina, both because it raised many issues and because it is an event we can still learn from. The information cycle started by Hurricane Katrina hasn't really ended yet, and when the next hurricane hits, information from Katrina will prove valuable for yet another information cycle. <laughs>